Hello, and welcome to this special high-tech edition of The Revenue Manager. For those that don't know, The Revenue Manager is a series that ran most of the summer uh, that uh, dealt with a lot of different current topics that face revenue managers and distribution people and digital marketers. It went along with a uh, an expert panel that was featured on Hospitality Net, the revenue optimization panel. Uh, but today we've got a special edition, especially for High Tech TV, and I'm super excited about what we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about how to drive the pent up demand that is out there as markets start to return. So before we jump into it, let me introduce our panelists. Really excited about the panel today. Uh, our first panelist is Nikki Graham. Uh, Nikki is VP of Marketing with Sendine. Of course, everyone that's associated with the space knows who Sendine is and what they do. They're one of the preeminent digital marketing firms in our industry. Uh, but Nikki, uh, welcome. Great to have you. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, our next guest uh, is no secret to those who've caught the revenue manager before, uh, but Sherrod Kapoor is a revenue and a distribution expert, and maybe some of you uh, will remember him from the very successful time period. That's when I know him from uh, when he ran a number of different leadership positions at Hyatt in both revenue and sales, uh, but Sherrod, welcome back to the revenue manager. Thank you, Scott. Pleasure to be here. Good to see everyone. Uh, great, man. Great, to, great to have you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, and then finally, Christoph Hutter. Christoph, a friend of mine, a uh, revenue expert. And uh, those of you who've seen the revenue manager at all, you know exactly who it is. He's one of the people behind putting it together. Uh, he also had a really big role in putting together a, a revenue management glossary that's uh, absolutely fantastic. And so, Christoph, man, uh, final panelist, but let me welcome you as well. Thank you very much, Scott. Happy to be here. Thank you, sir. And it's really uh, fantastic. And again, want to welcome all of the people at High Tech. A special shout out to uh, my friends at Rock that might have uh, slipped across the hall and uh, and snuck into high tech as well. So, uh, again, the format is we follow very closely with our uh, posts in the uh, Hospitality Net Revenue Optimization panel. And this one has everything to do with uh, driving this pent up demand into our hotels now that things have started to turn around. So what we've done is we've gone through and kind of pulled out some general talking points, some general themes, and we're just going to kind of run through this with this group of experts and, and uh, uh, to talk about them a little bit, and, uh, and I'm sure you guys will really enjoy it. So uh, the first topic that was really interesting that was seemed to be very much of a theme is that people need to, uh, that hotels need to reevaluate the market segments they chase, which seems kind of obvious, but I think there's quite a bit more to it than that. And so as we go around, Nikki, I'm going to choose you because you're the only one of us that has marketing in your title, um, but you know, tell me a little bit about what that means and and, uh, and what the implications are for hotels as we go forward. Yeah, sure. I think um, one of the key thing is is that no one size fits all, right? So um, reevaluating market segments has obviously been a big priority for a lot of hotels um, all across the globe in different aspects, depending on what they originally had or what they were used to compared to what they're now facing. What depending on if they've got um, domestic um, only or perhaps access to some international travelers. So I think it is obviously very dependent on where you are and the situation you're in. But I think there's a huge opportunity here um, for hoteliers. Those, I mean, I do appreciate there are many in very challenging situations, especially, you know, certain regions of APAC that have just kind of lost out on all international travel and seeing, you know, limited um, uh, domestic, but there are parts of Europe and, of course, the US that are seeing booms in domestic travel. And I think, yeah, there's a massive opportunity when it comes down to what hotels can do and how they can get creative. And you mentioned marketing in my title. And I think, you know, one of the biggest things is um, working together revenue side with the marketing team and looking at, okay, what are we seeing? Um, in our current segments, what's changed and how can we get creative and perhaps start addressing some of the, the customer needs that are coming through and perhaps reevaluating or rethinking what their offering is for different um, for different guests. <laughs> awesome. So, Sharon, let me I tell you, I want to go to you next, actually, uh, because I know you work with a lot of hotels directly. Um, we, we understand that we have to look at new sources of business, right, and understand where they are. But how, what's the more practical I mean, how do we get that rubber on the road? How? What's the process that that successful hotels are using to be able to to do this? I think uh, uh, once COVID hit and changed the entire landscape, it kind of threw the entire historical data out of the box uh, and started questioning everything that the hotels had to deal with. Uh, what became most critical for organizations was 
how they're collecting data, from where they're collecting data, and how they're actually processing it, using it, and to whose advantage. Uh, and in that uh, uh, light, forward-looking data holds the key to every hotel operation out there, how they're looking at that data, and not just looking at, hey, how many bookings I've got in the system, but really taking a very broad approach to it, looking at how destinations are being searched, which uh, flights are taking off or not taking off, uh, what's really happening at the meta side or the OTA side. And you know, if they can aggregate all of that data uh, in, in one location uh, and start looking at where the trends are showing, where the uh, uh, peaks are developing, that would give them such uh, astute knowledge about uh, all the decision making that they have to do in terms of pricing, in terms of marketing, in terms of flexibility in their operation. So uh, I, I believe hotel companies that are, or hotels in general that are looking at forward looking data were probably able to make the most of the pent up demand that everybody knew was coming in, in terms of revenge tourism at some stage. Um, but becoming much more educated about uh, where the customers are coming from because the customer landscape, like Nikki said, changed completely. I mean, the international travel was not happening. Domestically, travel is happening, still happening. Uh, whether it's local, is it regional, is it drive-in traffic? Uh, and that uh, you, you could only gauge from forward-looking uh, uh, trends, uh, and that becomes critical. So. Uh, th thanks, Sherry. Definitely. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think we're going to talk more. We'll get more into forward looking and, and, and actually some of the stuff that's come along with that that's been pretty amazing, right? That we've gotten some pretty, pretty quick innovation by necessity, but some pretty, pretty quick innovation. First off, let me ask you we need to reevaluate our market segments, right? Um, and I think one of the things that we've talked about, you and I specifically uh, at length, is that also involves an, a, a reevaluation of who it is we compete for those people with, right? We can't have that super limited uh, development kind of a competitive set, right? These are the buildings that are most like mine and who's getting the best return on investment. We have to have a comp set that says, okay, when someone looks at a marketplace, you know, what hotels are they thinking about staying at if they don't think it, if they don't stay at mine? Um, and so can you tell, tell us, us a little bit about some of the success you've had uh, with some of your hotels in terms of looking at, um, you know, diverse comp set, again, incorporating that whole idea of different market segments, but but really sort of kind of re-engineering a hotel on the fly, you know, serving a customer that you weren't necessarily, that the building wasn't necessarily built for. Let me say it like that. So, yeah, I think that it's really important that we, look at um, the entire uh, customer experience journey from the customer point of view. So we really need to, to uh, switch sides in a way um, and, and start looking at, okay, how are they actually really finding us today in this changed world? Um, we have, of course, a lot of experience on how it was done in the past, but things have changed. They've always changed. They will always keep changing but we need to really make this transition now. And I think a lot of people have realized that, that the old ways don't work anymore and we need to do it differently. Um, so how do, do people uh, find us? And um, that that means the, the typical comp sets that we have uh, looked at to kind of compare our hotel with, um, we need to throw that overboard because the, um, you know, the building across the street may or may not be a competitor. And who is it a competitor for? Uh, it always was a little bit like that when we compared maybe um, one one hotel being more uh, a competitor uh, in the group business and the other one more on the, on the transient side and, you know, things like that. But I think this has become much more dynamic and comp sets will dynamically change. So it's also important that we are on top of that and, and uh, see well, what what kind of strategy am I implementing right now? And for this specific strategy, who am I competing with? Uh, that's that's one important point, I think. Uh, Chris, I'm, I'm actually I want to stay with you because I think uh, Sherrod got us started on on uh, on our next topic, really, which is the, the whole concept of forward looking data. And you, you said something which was really interesting, which is looking at the customer journey, but looking at them now. 
you know, we used to, we would look at people once they were done and we could maybe even go back and attribute what booking source they came from. And then we went chasing people with a similar profile. Whereas now we're looking theoretically, where are people searching today? And we're chasing them in, in, in near real time in that search. And so how is that? I mean, what, what are some of the tools that are involved in that? And, and then how, how has that changed? I mean, clearly some hotels are going to recover quicker than others. If some people are waiting for the the business to actually travel before they start to capitalize on it, and others are looking forward. So, how's that? Uh, how's it changing the way we run hotels, and, and who's winning and who's losing? Yeah, I mean, of course, obviously, I come from the revenue management side, and in the past, we've always said, you know, revenue management uh, is the art of turning away business. Well, I think a lot of us have realized that there was not a lot of business to turn away in the last little while. Um, and, and for some markets that has fortunately started to change, but I think we can rethink that definition a little bit. So instead of the art of turning away business, we can say the art of uncovering opportunity. And when we, we, uh, uncover this opportunity, we say, okay, well, we, we can't really rely on the historic data anymore. Um, at least not in the, in the short term or to a different degree, some things will still hold true. To, to some degree, and it depends a lot on the property, depends a lot on the market. Um, but, but you know, grosso modo, in the, la in the past, we, we looked at same time last year, same time two years ago, uh, plugged in the numbers, and then we knew what to do. Well, that, that doesn't work anymore. Instead, what we need to do is look on the, on the short-term trend side of things um, and really analyze um, the, the, the behaviors and patterns that we see there. Um, which means we need to integrate data from a lot of uh, different data points. Uh, in, in the past, we, we primarily looked at pickup. Even the, the most revenue management systems looked at the pickup exclusively. Um, but we can't really do that anymore. Um, we need to, to look a little bit more broadly at that. We need to integrate demand data, for example. So that's something that, that I have uh, done oftentimes um, not just look at the, the actual pickup, but look at the, the, the demand that we get on the website, which means ho hopefully we have sufficient traffic on the website that we can then draw conclusions for that. Because if we don't have a lot of traffic, then the whole exercise becomes kind of pointless, which means the hotelier needs to, to invest in marketing to get the people to come to the website in the first place. Um, and when we, when we have this information, this, this short-term trend data and the, the search data, um, which is the, the most valuable uh, things, then we will see where is opportunity, where mm, does our pricing strategy make sense, where doesn't it make sense, where can we uh, put some additional offers out there and things like that. Uh, and then we need to, of course, look into the future. We need to, to see what do we have on the books um, and, and work much more with what's going on at the destination, what kind of uh, events are there, micro events, you know, things that happen at the different businesses in, in our uh, neighborhood that could potentially impact it and all these these things. So there are a lot of, of different data points that we will need to, to look at in, in the future and then see how does that impact our, uh, our business, our booking curve and so on. Uh, th thanks, Christoph. Uh, I, I completely agree. I think that there's... Um, you know, when markets recover, they don't recover democratically. The best hotels recover first, and then it kind of goes down. It goes down the list, and so those that are better prepared clearly are going to do better, and those that are actually looking forward, as opposed to still looking back, are going to do do even better than that. Um, Nikki, let me let me shift to you, kind of on, on that same topic. But let's say we do identify an opportunity. We find something that people are. We find that people are looking. I mean, th this is kind of your guys' wheelhouse. What kind of tools are available to get in front of them and 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 to uh, you know persuade them to be our customer instead of someone else's? Absolutely. So, I mean, there's lots to do. Um, I think one of the key things, um, and Christoph talked a lot about it, was um, you know looking at kind of holistically the whole customer journey and um, bringing those data points into a central place. So. I think what we've seen is those customers of ours and, and others in the industry that have a kind of central repository like a CRM or a CDP, um, a customer data platform, have the ability to have a holistic view of all of those data points so they can understand what kind of guests are looking, um, what kind of guests are booking, so they can potentially um, maximize that and find other similar guests that they can then um, kind of draw in to um, drive demand. So I think first of all, having that kind of picture of your data and really understanding the guests that you've got coming through your door is 
critical. And I think if you if you don't have that, you, you are going to find yourself falling behind others. Um, once you do have that, um, there's a lot of kind of digital mar and other marketing opportunities that you can then take advantage of. So, you know, improving kind of SEM, so search engine, um, and, and really ensuring that you're kind of high up in the ranks um, when people are looking for different types of properties. Again, you know, going back to the market segment piece, if you feel like you're starting to see that this, this is really changing and there are a certain type of guests that are coming, you know, it's potentially more leisure guests with families, maybe they're looking for different types of experiences or, um, you know, they want to actually, uh, they cut, they're coming to the hotel to, to provide more information on, you know, adventures with the kids or dining out. Um, think about how you are um, uh, positioning your own website and the messaging for your property online so that when people are searching for these types of things you you come right up there in the top of the search engine and obviously that's just kind of one one little tactic that you can do but there's lots from a digital marketing perspective and i think um, the more that hotels are capitalizing on the data that they have the information and that forward-looking information of the type of guests that are booking and then trying to capitalize and draw more that look like them in for the future the better they'll do Absolutely. It's interesting you say more that look like them. And um, uh, I'm really glad to hear you say that. I think there's a real um, uh, kind of a reckoning time right now in marketing in terms of how do we use data? Do we use data to get super creepy and personal about people? Or do we use data to understand that, that you know, that data helps us have a better level of market segmentation than we've ever been able to have before. And let's treat them like market segments. Let's not try yeah. to invade their privacy. And, yeah, and, 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 and I think, things. <laughs> absolutely. And I think, you know, we're at this like critical turning point as well. We have a lot of privacy changes in, in the you know industry at the moment. And um, again, when you have, the ability to access your own first party data, you have a lot more control over understanding who your guests are instead of relying on sort of third party um, cookies. We've even got, you know, the Apple privacy change that happened two days ago um, with the new updates. And that's having a kind of really seismic shift when it comes to email marketing and understanding people that are opening your emails and, and who they are and where they're from. So again, the more you have that kind of first party data, your own that sits within your CRM um, and you can integrate with different um, systems within your property, the more powerful it's gonna be and the more you can capitalize on that kind of um, lookalike models and, and people that, that look like that. Yeah, that was the connection I really want to make sure that people understand is that first party data, those are your best customers. These are people that really know your, your, uh, they know your product, they use your product, if they use you over and over again, it's best suited for them. And so a lot of this technology really enables you to find more people that are very much like them without having to creep around in their homes and see yes. what kind of shoes they wear. No creeping like, needed. No creeping more, needed. Uh, a much more positive way to do it, but it's super, super, super powerful. And and one of the things to keep in mind is it's pretty difficult. This is where I'm going to go next, Sharon. I'm not going to let Nikki, uh, because she's kind of in the business, we're not going to let her answer this question, but how does a small hotel navigate this space when we start to talk about forward-looking data? Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I think both Nikki and Christoph has have already touched these points as to how critical it is to stay agile, uh, keep looking at uh, what uh, your data points are uh, in future looking at. Um, I think from a hotel operation point of view, any hotel that's looking at demand, uh, which uh, from a historical perspective just does not exist, um, how do they still stay agile with very limited marketing funds? Uh, how do they still go about targeting the right customer? Uh, with uh, uh, probably no cash flow because of the last few months and how tight it goes for hotels, um, and how do they go about creating the right experience uh, for the customer that uh, whose behavior is completely changed? Uh, so it may be the same corporate business traveler that's uh, uh, camping at a very local uh, or a nearby resort, uh, and their behavior is completely different from what it is when they usually travel. Uh, which means that the hotels have to reinvent themselves, look at experiences differently, uh, and that probably they will still get from forward-looking data. Uh, and, and, and I think it's just not the pickup and the booked data into their hotels, but really broaden the spectrum uh, of what, uh, uh, where they see trends developing, 
where can they see this aggregation happening uh, and how they can bring a little bit of uh, agility in their decision making when it comes to pricing, when it comes to uh, competitive sets and, the, and monitoring of that, what Christoph uh, alluded to earlier. Uh, and I, I think if uh, uh, we have to only go and uh, see hotels and examine how hotels uh, uh, performed uh, during the summer where uh, some of this revenge tourism was reflecting and pent up demand was peaking, uh, there were some hotels just down the kilometer that were not getting a lot of business and some hotels were really uh, optimizing a lot of demand and that just goes back to show who probably was proactive enough or had the right resources to go about and uh, uh, still look at data uh, and strategize and revenue manage and uh, uh, go and market to the right customer groups, whether uh, it is through an SEM or uh, through any paid campaign. Um, so I think uh, forward-looking data uh, is here to stay. It could become the mainstay of a lot of business decision-making as customers' behaviors change uh, uh, they've always changed, but now they're changing more rapidly. Um, and it's, uh, uh, it, it'll probably even reflect once your corporate demand is back, uh, that uh, uh, local ain't global. And I keep saying that because uh, your global contracts and how they may end up producing and what kind of demand they bring back to your hotels will be considerably different. Uh, and that hotels need to understand what really is going on in their local environment. Um, so from that regard, I think forward-looking data is really critical. Uh, I already mentioned that, you know, all search data that is not limited to hotels, but a much broader uh, spectrum of market, of destinations, of searches, uh, is more critical for them to understand who is searching, what are they searching, where are they planning to go, and, and be able to price and market uh, accordingly. So uh, I, as I think back on this conversation, it's pretty, it's pretty a little bit high level. So I think we, there's a risk maybe that we still have some people that think that forward-looking data means turning their laptop to a different orientation on their desk or potentially getting a crystal ball. But also just give you an illustration that came up in class. We use uh, one of the major data providers, uh, actually OTA Insights, I'm happy to say who they are. They provide uh, tools for us to use in class. Uh, and we use their um, um, uh, Market Insights product. It's a bunch of students we've each are assigned to hotels and they were looking, this happened to be in January of this past year. So as travel is still pretty curtailed, right? And most travel is very domestic. This person happened to be look, using, uh, had a Florida hotel, uh, a North Miami Beach hotel. So not enjoying the real froth of the Miami Beach, but doing better than some and looking out into the future. And all of a sudden started to realize the surge in demand in March, two weeks. And drilled in and drilled in and drilled in and drilled in. And in fact, it wasn't very local demand. It was New York City and specifically airline searches into just this time period. And after a little bit of research, it was the two spring break weeks for the state school systems in the state of New York. And a lot of people were coming from Florida or looking to come from New York to Florida you know, to travel. So they actually were able to identify this, not because someone else, wow, where did they get all this business and look at it in the rear view mirror, but again, using this ability to have forward looking data, specifically in this case, airline search information into your market. They were actually able to target some social media. They did a pretty cool, cool promotion. They, yeah, they, can, they did something cool. Go ahead. Yeah. And I can concur uh, in Market Insight is a very powerful tool. Many hotels use it quite effectively. I've used it in the past. Uh, in fact, I collaborated with the OTN site to uh, write about green shoot strategy as to how do you uh, spot uh, uh, green shoots in future. Um, and uh, it was all about looking at destinations like Miami, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, not London, but you know other destinations, even uh, Phoenix uh, to some extent, and seeing when and how that data uh, is noticeable. Uh, and trending to become uh, a part of uh, demand for hotels to price and optimize. So yeah, I mean, that, that product is able to provide a lot of what I just said in terms of forward-looking data. Uh, and uh, uh, it's a cool product, it's very user-friendly as well. 
Uh, yeah, I think my, my point in really bringing up the example more than anything else is it's really not it's it's getting the information is rocket science, but companies like Santa and other companies are taking care of it. But it, but but it's it's really just it's actually very actionable information. It's not way out there, some massively you know algorithm driven thing. It's just right. the ability to look at information that didn't used to exist before. Right. So uh, really 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 powerful. I'm, I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we talked about it. Um, let's talk, uh, Sharon. I'm actually going to stay with you if you don't mind, and let's just kind of talk. In, so now we're looking for them in the future and everything but one of the other probably the biggest theme in in the post for the uh, article this time around was all about knowing your customer getting an understanding of who those people are and their needs have changed right so building experiences i i constantly say sell future memories don't sell beds and toilets right don't be a commodity be be, be something special so tell me a little bit more like where's that going because that's we were in the experience economy. We kind of fell into the cleanliness economy. I think we're coming back into the experience economy again. What, what's it mean? Well, I, I think it is. Uh, uh, it probably never went away. It was uh, uh, only a blip, um, but it is here to stay in terms of uh, how well you need to know your customer. Everything probably in future is going to get driven by customers and not your traditional box hotels, which are providing ABC services. Now customers want uh, a very different experience, whether it's more lifestyle or it is wherever it is driven. But I think from a hotel perspective, uh, what's critical is that they really understand why their customer is traveling uh, and what those needs are. And I uh, uh, and, and probably you rightly said your business traveler is now traveling for leisure. And that needs, whether they're traveling as singles, as couples, as families, with children, uh, or, or just family reunions or uh, mates re reunion, that's all very different. Uh, and they're looking for very specific experiences. So the more you understand your new customer set, the faster you're able to reach out and understand their behavior, not only from a booking perspective, but what really their needs are, the better you're, you'll be able to serve. And let me just say, I think city hotels to a large extent still suffers uh, comparatively to resorts because that's how leisure destinations uh, uh, were being seen and hotels or companies who had uh, hotels and leisure destinations were really reaping the benefits of it. But city hotels can reach out to their local, to their uh, wider audience and create the right experiences for them, uh, which means a lot of flexibility in their operation uh, and understanding that and not just creating an offering uh, out there and saying, hey, this package is available to you, but really think through what they uh, uh, want to sell to the customer. I think uh, uh, from that perspective, uh, 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 your, your customer still is the king uh, and uh, uh, will drive all future innovation as well in terms of uh, what kind of hotels are coming out. Um, Yep. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. I, Nikki, I, I want to come to you and, and next, I think. The whole <clears throat> idea of, you know, think about it. We've sold packages forever. We put breakfast in a room. <laughs> we charge slightly less than the retail value of breakfast. And we think we're fantastic at, uh, at bundling and packaging. Um, but you come from the marketing side, right? So there's a little bit different kind of an approach to that sort of a thing. Uh, I mean, what, what, what can people do that's meaningful? What, what will work today? Uh, clearly, it's not bed and breakfast. We sell a lot of them because that's what we put on the shelf. But 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 what will drive people to choose us? Yeah, well, so I think one thing that stands out to me is um, being consistent. So, you know, there's selling kind of different packages online or, you know, sending an email with an offer. And But I think um, maintaining that consistency across all your messaging, everything, whether it comes from, you know, your digital marketing, pre pre getting that guest through the door, um, to, you know, pre-arrival, to kind of sending them consistent information about that offer, and then when they're on property as well. I think that's really key. But little things, right? You know, I mean, when you think about yourself and, like, when we're traveling now, it's most likely to kind of either see family that you perhaps haven't seen for a long time, or it's you finally had an opportunity to take a break from work and you're off with your family to have some, some space on your own. So I think it's about thinking about what common experiences people are looking for right now and then tailoring expectation and how things are delivered on property to those guests so you know simple things um gifts in the room recognition when they arrive 
um, it goes such a long way. I mean, if you are returning to a hotel that you've stayed at pre-pandemic, you know, it may be a couple of years ago, but if it's just so much as a welcome back and we're so happy to have you back and stay at our property, that goes so far. And I know that in the past, um, you know, especially kind of traveling for business pre pre pandemic, there's been a lot of situations where I've stayed at the same hotel, but they haven't recognized that I'm the same person when they've popped up on the front desk. And, and you do remember that. And um, so little things like that go a long way. If you know that they're traveling with children because you've got that in the booking data, it's on their guest profile, small touches that make it easier traveling with kids, you know, um, things like that in the room, you know, cookies that um, are perhaps there for when the kids arrive, little things that they take time, but actually if you're doing it on a scale and you know that you're prepared and you've got the information in a central place, you can leverage it in different ways. And, and again, just try and get creative to, to make those memorable experiences and those, you know, Instagrammable <laughs> photos <laughs> that everyone loves. Christoph, I'm going to hit you for the, I'm going to hit you with the hard part, right? The, the, the finance part. Can we make money with this stuff or is it a marketing cost? Um, for sure, we can, we can uh, make money. Uh, we we need to find the right offer, uh, and we need to find the 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 product that the customer actually wants, um, and that's how we we will make money. Um, we maybe can sell certain offers only on the direct channels. Uh, that will make us a lot of money because we can save on uh, a distribution cost. Uh, you know, that's a third category. That's like a counter marketing cost, I think. So they're like, yeah. oh, I'm not sure what to call that, but sure, that makes it, yeah, exactly. I mean, if we can, if we can trade a five percent expense in something that we're adding from an experience perspective for a fifteen or twenty percent margin from a third party, then obviously that's a, you know, it's a cost, but it's a big savings too. So yeah, I yeah. I mean, when 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 you had mentioned earlier the the typical uh, room and breakfast kind of offer. Uh, it still works really well, um, and, and things like parking, these these kind of offers, they work really, really well. Um, but I think we need to think a little bit more out of the box, probably, um, and, and do what others have not done. Um, what I have not really come across oftentimes when I traveled, uh, and you know, being, being uh, a revenue manager, looking at a lot of data all day long, um, I need at least two screens to be happy. If I don't have two screens, then you know my, my day already uh, starts to get cloudy. Uh, but if I'm traveling, I can't really pack my my uh, giant screen in my suitcase. Um, but which hotel offers me a screen in my room that I can just plug in my laptop and then have this two screen experience again? So. If we build offers around that, then all of a sudden we become interesting for for the corporate travelers. And until our competition has has kind of caught up with that and went to their owners and get the money uh, for the screens, which really costs nothing, um, they, they, that gives us some kind of a, a, an advantage at least for some time, uh, you know. And then we adapt again uh, for the next thing. And I think that's where where there is a lot of opportunity. Uh, you know, we, we just need to really think out of the box and, l again, listen to the customer. What do they want? What do they need during their travel? Um, you know, Nick has pointed out the travel uh, with, with uh, kids, uh, family, they have very different needs. Um, and, and we need to build an experience for them, you know, Halloween is already coming up. You know, if we go to the grocery store, uh, I, I know it because it's full of candy. So um, if if uh, if we know that already now, um, and in our market, Halloween is a thing. Um, well, we can prepare for it already. And it's one of my most favorite stories was uh, at, at one hotel um, where where I was involved in. There was a five year old kid, uh, and he really wanted to see a ghost um on 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 halloween and so the front desk talked to the parents and asked their permission uh and that's important uh if they can do something and the, the parents said okay they went out for the day and when they came back home the whole room was decorated in halloween style you know they had gone out to the dollar store picked up a few things and they found a little you know paper kind of ghost nothing scary you know he was five years old so uh just something uh, funny 
The kid was through the roof, of course. And as any parent knows, if the kid is through the roof, so are the parents. Those are happy guests. They are going to tell that to everyone there know how fantastic of an experience they had. These are the kind of things we need to do. It's completely out of the box. It's really an experience. Um, and, 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 and that's where we can differentiate, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think you make you make an excellent point. I think you, you made a great point too about the about the conventional packages. Conventional packages work great as market segmentation tools, right? Business travelers don't buy breakfast for two. Um, you know, you can use them to add, you can use them to add value and things like that. They're not particularly inspirational, in my opinion, at shifting share or causing somebody to recognize us versus another. Uh, whereas some of the experiences that we're talking about now, I think we've got the ability to kind of. Uh, to, to sort of bundle them up to get in front of even potentially new customers, like your example of potentially the digital nomad that might be very interested in that, you know, seamless docking station and, and uh, you know, a laser printer in the lobby that's connected to the network that you don't charge me to use and and, uh, and different things like that. So I think as you start to, to consider the marketing implications of that experience um, and you start to consider some of the stuff that, that Nikki mentioned in terms of being able to target people more directly with technology and stuff like that. I think that's where there's a, a, a nice a nice convergence. And, and it kind of sort of takes me, Sharon, I want to go to you if you don't mind. Um, um, but we talked about this earlier. COVID caused a big shift in consumer patterns, right? Bookings were half and less of what they were prior but social media activity for travel was 10 times or more in some cases. So really people were stuck in that, in, if you want to use Google's terminology, they really spent a lot of time in the dreaming phase and not very much time moving beyond the beyond the dreaming phase. But but like, what can we do to take advantage of that? It's probably not going away, right? I mean, if you follow a bunch of stuff, as long as they continue to post, it continues to show up on your feed. So, you know, how can we how can we take advantage of that? How can hotels leverage that going forward that, that that people have kind of tuned into a little bit more uh, the social environment uh, at this point in terms of travel planning. Yep. Uh, uh, and just before I go into that, I just want to acknowledge uh, the powerful points that Christoph uh, made earlier, which mm -hmm. just ties back the data and ties back to knowing your customer and its needs, and then really breaking the traditional boundaries of uh, how you package, how you sell, how you target with gifts and things like that, and just really takes it to a notch above and that's what uh, companies need to do but also price it effectively uh, because if you don't do then nothing will come down to the net um, but uh, uh, going back to what you, uh, you were discussing in terms of uh, uh, digital experiences dreaming phase uh, a lot of that uh, uh, is where hotels can again uh, uh, monitor that continually I mean it, a lot of it just falls into the shoulders of marketing folks uh, whether it's the digital or the social, the gurus in the in the hotel organization trying to uh, uh, look at all that data and information and see how people have been uh, navigating through uh, various destinations and what their experiences, uh, what, what are the experiences they are seeking, and then try and adjust their own strategy uh, around it in terms of uh, hey, what kind of if you're a lifestyle hotel. Uh, are you are you really catering to the digital nomad? Are you catering to the uh, Instagram enthusiast, uh, or are you in, uh, catering to what really as an experience they seek uh, from their stay? Um, and I think a lot of that information sits in, in an online environment, um, and that's where marketing can get very creative in terms of just looking at data all the time and then saying, hey, that was a phase where customers were just searching and not necessarily experiencing it, can we try and invite that uh, uh, into the products and services that we offer, which means a lot of flexibility for uh, brands, a lot of flexibility for operations. And, uh, uh, and I think one of the best uh, uh, category of brands probably is the lifestyle, which can take it to different notches altogether by giving uh, the experiences, because currently they're built uh, with consumer in mind and uh, and marketing can and will play a pivotal role uh, in looking at all of those future strategies as well. So uh, I, I completely agree. I think it plays a very pivotal role. I think it also gives us we're another one of those crossroads, um, in, in, in my opinion, and that is that it's starting to become perhaps beneficial to be independent. 
right? It's starting to become potentially beneficial to tell your own story as opposed to piggybacking on a kind of more watered down story that has to fit multiple locations. You, you know, and and so um, I think I kind of think of it as you know managing my own Facebook page. Who would manage my Facebook page more effectively, me or someone sitting in London that had to manage 500 of them on a daily basis before they could go home and argue with their husband or their wife? So, um, the the kind of the idea of that personalization and and um, the idea of, of being able to create an offering that's very specific has the additional challenge of then getting that offering in front of people that care about it. So, uh, Nikki, I was going to kind of just throw that to you because that's kind of some of the stuff that you guys do. If someone's sitting right now going, that sounds really wonderful and there's all this great stuff around me, but uh, what do I do? Put an ad in the newspaper. How can they get help? Yeah, it's a really good question because I think, you know, everything we've talked about is it's, you know, it is absolutely fundamental for hoteliers, but they're also, we're kind of at this like perfect storm, isn't it? Where there's, you know, a lack of resources within so many departments at the moment because of staffing issues, bringing, trying to get people to come back from furlough and, and the labor shortage. I mean, it's, we're kind of seeing it everywhere at the moment. It's, it's really tough. So when, if you haven't got that expertise internally within your team, um, I really do suggest like try starting small so not trying to overwhelm yourself and saying okay i've got to get i've got to become a mastermind at you know sem meta everything you know i think really start small and see where you think um you can start to see a bit of, like you know test things out i would say you know going through with social is a, is a really great opportunity um first off you can kind of test the water with some ad campaigns and see um, how, what kind of response you're getting, what kind of, um, you know, traction you're getting on your website, if it's driving conversions. If it isn't, then try something new. And, um, you know, I, I also think, you know, go and um, speak to kind of consultants out there, speak to any kind of tech providers that you, you think might be able to help because we're all here to help. And that's kind of what we do. Um, and, and I think, yeah, the key thing is, is, is really start small, don't kind of overwhelm yourself with a, a massive list of to do's um, and and also listen to the market. We've spoken a lot about kind of forward looking and seeing what's out there. But a lot of a lot of kind of what your message can be is you can actually garner a lot from the news. I mean, for example, we've seen that, um, you know, the US is opening up to Europe and the UK in um, as of the beginning of November. So there's a huge opportunity there now for um, hotels that were previously seeing a lot of international travel um, from Europe or from the UK. There's going to be a, a, a big influx in bookings. I mean, there already, ha already has been. There's been a lot of news about um, kind of the Virgin Atlantic. I think they saw a 600 percent increase in um, bookings, flight bookings. So they're just you've got it free from the news that there's an opportunity there to kind of perhaps look at your ad spend. Um, on social media or elsewhere on digital to see if you can kind of capitalize on some of that demand that's going to come through from those those two markets. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that is your, I think you make a great point, right? Start start uh, with the lowest hanging fruit, first of all, right? And start, and start with what's easiest. If you have some really amazing once a year festival that's quite unique, start to build something around that, right? And, and something that, that, that is, is um, uh, has the ability to kind of to piggyback on existing demand. And it doesn't take a whole lot of understanding to be able to look at, uh, you know, hashtags and things like that and understand basically what's really people care about and what they don't care about. Uh, and I'll often see hotels and they show me these amazing posts they think are amazing, but it's a picture of people at the pool, hashtag fantastic Sunday brunch, hashtag best rooms in Miami. Well, there's no consistency to all of that, right? Wait a minute. So who, who, who? The, the, so this is for the people that want to hang out by the pool that also want the best brunch, and you know, it's 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 not targeted, and and so a lot of times, really, quite frankly, starting just a little bit and 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 being able to understand, you know, start slow with just even some organic stuff on social. Uh, just start monitoring your own what other people are posting about you is a pretty good place to start. So that's in some cases, just resharing some of that can be super powerful. So yeah, I would say don't be super scared of it. Don't don't run too far away from it. But I will tell you also kind of to give you a little bit of a shameless plug, I've never been involved in an organization like yours at a hotel that had any kind of scale, that it didn't make sense, that I didn't get a return on investment in terms of being able to get that assistance. Because let's face it, the business we run 
if there's a fight in the linen room, no marketing get done gets done today. So sometimes if that's a function that's outside of the factory, so to speak, it actually can be a lot more effective too. So, uh, so, so thank you, Christoph. I'm going to come to you. We're going to shift a, a little bit, but we t that was really how we would drive direct business to a hotel, which is something that that those of us that are in this 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 field specifically, we spend a lot of time talking about. But there's a lot of leisure business right now, and we all know that the online travel agencies have invested zillions of dollars in building a loyalty of their own in the leisure markets. Uh, and one of the themes that came out in the in the uh, uh, hospitality net opinion was that we really need to kind of get away from that evil perception of online travel agencies and really sort of understand who they are and understand that they're not necessarily in business to make us rich, but at the same time to start to develop better, smarter partnerships. And so like, what does that mean to you? Like help us understand what a better, smarter, smarter partnership would mean with an OTA. Well, in the end of the day, it comes down to profitability and which channel is more profitable. And, and we need to go after that uh, channel and, and optimize it. Uh, I think that's really the, the key word here. Uh, nobody can live without the OTAs. Uh, that's, that's, you know, um, maybe, maybe very, very small, high, high, high uh, level luxury hotels uh, could, could achieve something like that. Um, but that's really a league on its own. And, um, you know, the typical hotel and, and for everyone who's watching, probably we have the OTAs. We need to live with them, whether we like it or not. Uh, it's a fact. So how can we make the best out of it? Um, and, and that's really where we, where we need to stand out. So on the one hand, I would suggest to really make sure to optimize the listing. Um, that includes regular audits, that includes making sure that everybody in the team goes on the OTA and tries to actually book that from time to time uh, to get acquainted with the level of booking experience that you have on, on one of the OTAs. And then go on your own website and try to book a room there and compare the two and see uh, where the OTAs shine and where the booking engine and the website probably doesn't. And then try to optimize that. Uh, it means that very possibly go out and find a new booking engine. Uh, there are some really great ones out there, and there are a lot of not so great ones out there. Um, and, and it makes a huge difference. Um, it makes an absolute huge difference. And you know, these these things, yes, there is a cost to it, but it's so minimal um, that, that probably, uh, you know, oftentimes with these kind of uh, technologies, by the time you get the first bill, you already made it, uh, made it back. Um, it's it's not it's not the the uh, legacy PMS kind of uh, hundred thousand dollar expenses anymore that we that we uh, had back in the day. Those are very reasonable fees, and and you know, in the end of the day, we 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 need to 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 put down some money in order to make some. But we're going to make so much more if we do that. Um, and and that's kind of the the key point. So we need to invest into a great. Uh, booking experience, which again brings us back to that entire customer journey um, that, that I mentioned initially. It starts with the booking. It starts during that entire research phase. And you know, when I look at some industry stats and I see that 80% of people who have booked uh, on, on a third party website um, before they booked there went on the hotel website and then decided to book somewhere else regardless of that. Um, it really goes to show how terrible the booking experience is for, mm -hmm. for direct bookings. Um, all that said, uh, make sure to optimize the, the OTA listing so that you gain in ranking there, so that you 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 know have e everything, the content and, and everything is is as best as possible. Um, because the reality is you are competing there uh, with with all the other hotels in your market, potentially with other markets as well. And you need to make sure that you st stand out on that OTA platform. That's really, really important. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's it's interesting. I've, I think people have stopped the all or nothing uh, Darth Vader evil empire thing. And, and uh, um, I think it's really an issue of what, of what what profitability looks like. And it's a really interesting exercise sometimes to listen to a hotel that has a very, very, very devoted anti-OTA strategy as opposed to a profitability or a direct business strategy, it's really interesting sometimes to look at what a group room costs them compared to what an OTA room costs them because sometimes it's three times as much. By yeah. the time you discount the room, the amount they discount it, and you staff that entire department and everything, it's actually quite a bit, quite a bit more expensive and, and, and 
quite often, a surprising, a surprising large amount of time. So I think it's time that we kind of had, a, a, as you said, a, a profit or, or, or a grown up approach as opposed to, uh, you know, sort of being biased by source. Uh, and and that sort of thing. Um, are, are you sharing? I want to ask you, and then uh, we're going to wrap up with Nikki. We'll talk a little bit about technology. But are, what are you finding? I mean, is that? I mean, it was everything was anti OTA direct business. I think now we pretty much want anyone that's got a credit card. And so, how has that changed? Uh, how has that changed the, uh, uh, the you know the discussion in hotels really? Well, I, I, I mean, I completely agree with Christopher what he said uh, with regards to looking at profitability and looking at uh, where your is coming from um, but I do believe that hotels were able to drive a lot of direct bookings during this period uh, and a lot speaks to the kind of experiences they were able to create uh, and also create a bit of loyalty uh, in the bar game um, but I believe that OTAs are here to stay uh, but yet it's another booking channel uh, what hotels really need to start looking into is uh, how they are uh, revenue managing them from a net perspective and not necessarily from a top line perspective and that's where they will see the difference and how OTS can be probably a better partner uh, than how they are probably perceived today uh, which also uh, goes back to show that hotels probably in this period have they I mean these are just general questions that come up whether they have learned to do things differently uh, are they changing uh, tactics? Are they reimagining their booking engines and their booking sites? Uh, and what kind of an experience are they providing on the social sites uh, compared to just uh, experiences on their sites as well? Um, but yeah, I mean, from a distribution perspective, it's critical. It is not just OTAs. I think it's a lot more uh, in terms of uh, a varied distribution. Um, that goes to a lot of smaller players as, as well that were affected, but that probably are the first touch point for a lot of local and regional customers uh, and also for international customers. Yeah, um, I mean, I think you, 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 go you sorry, make a, you, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Sharon, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that when you're looking at uh, it from a pent-up demand perspective, uh, hotels probably in that phase have just learned uh, a lot uh, that probably needs to be reviewed, to be done differently because that phase may come back again and it's probably just reflecting a new way of doing business as well for them uh, with limited resources or no resources at all. Yeah, I mean, I think if you think about everything we've talked about, right, a lot of this is about experiences and those kind of things, which gets in front of a customer at an earlier point in the process. If they're searching for Miami Beach hotels, you've lost any uniqueness. Now you're a commodity. And so there's really no reason to pull yourself out of the marketplace. I think you just, as Christoph mentioned very astutely, I think you need to make sure that you're looking at each of those transactions from a profitability perspective, is it is it is a useful transaction or not a useful transaction? Unfortunately, the occupancies that most of us are running right now, almost any profit's good profit, and so we tend to be uh, we tend to be pretty accepting. So there was one other topic that came up. We're kind of getting very close to the end of our time, and that was the whole need to make sure that we finally are integrated from technology. I can't tell you how many hotels I go into the back office and someone's looking at one monitor and typing into another computer. It's just the most heartbreaking <laughs> transaction you can ever you can ever see, right? And so uh, let me ask you, Nikki. I mean, do you think we finally get you know enough? APIs and stuff that everything can start talking to itself, or is that a pipe dream still? I honestly think there's a really big shift going on in our industry now. I think kind of COVID, the pandemic has, has kind of been a big wake up call for everyone. Um, unfortunately, we are also battling with kind of limited budgets and, and restricted team and smaller teams. Um, but I do think people are really starting to understand kind of the importance of that integrated tech stack and and technology companies are now understanding the importance of open APIs, as you said, and the ability to kind of integrate with with as many people as possible, even if they are your competitor, because ultimately it's not possible. It's it's very rare that a customer is going to come to you if you do everything for all of your solutions. Ultimately, the goal is to whatever system you use is to have an integrated solution so that, yeah, you are just all going from the same data set and understanding and having the same view. And I think, you know, um, some really interesting points there just about kind of, you know, 
direct and and the OTAs and and I think you know if you haven't got it in your budget right now to kind of invest in a CRM or invest in a CDP or even change your booking engine one of the um you know the trends that we've seen that you guys that we've talked about is you know that um very common scenario of of you know searching for a hotel or, or a type of a hotel in a certain area going to an OTA then going to the website one really easy way to be able to capture that guest data is to have a really simple kind of sign up form um, to their newsletter. Um, if you're putting, again, um, it's a simple kind of marketing tactic, but sometimes not always thought about because you're worrying about kind of the booking and, and that driving the conversion. But actually, if you look at a simple conversion, like a, a subscribe to our newsletter or, or subscribe to get an offer or an experience or something that is, that you're offering that's unique to your property, then that's a great way to capture their data. And then you've got that in your system and you can then target them with, with hopefully some, you know, kind of personalized offers. But yeah, I mean, we keep coming back to the integrated tech stack and it's it, it really is fundamental. And I, I do think there's a shift. I think technology solutions are understanding now that open is the way and this closed, mentality just doesn't work anymore. Um, I think hotels also are understanding that. We just will see a big shift over the next few years as, as kind of hopefully demand comes back to where it was pre-pandemic. Budgets kind of start returning to um, where they were before and, and people can really start investing in this area. And and as long as, you know, people like us, we're out there kind of doing as much education as we can um, uh, about the importance of this, I think we'll, we'll get there for sure. Um, it's just taken us a little bit longer. <laughs> so I, I completely agree with you, by the way. I love uh, you made a great analogy of, uh, of of really putting together best technology for you based on what you need at your hotel. And so that can mean selecting different things. And, and in my opinion, they, sh they all should be able to talk. I should be able to choose the pieces that I want. But Christoph, I'm going to ask you, it poses a challenge, right? Theoretically, we could buy cars that way too. We could go to an auto parts store with a giant list and we could buy all of those things. We could push three carts out to the car and we could go home and we could assemble a car. But few people would have the skill set to do that, right? So I think it's a little bit of an intimidating task. So how does someone, you know, take a look at their tech stack and, you know, get it to get it to be what we just talked about being so easy to make happen? How do you, uh, what's the starting point? Yeah, so it's it's a really really uh, important point that that how can a hotel do all that and you know working for for brands and and larger management companies you probably get some support from there hopefully from from the management company anyways um, uh, and obviously the brand will deliver the tech stack it's all ready to go and and you know take it or leave it. Um, but on the independent side, and that's what I enjoy very much, and that's why my consultancy specializes exclusively on independent hotels, because that uh, opens up a huge range of opportunities to really select a tech stack that is perfect for this specific hotel, for for the, the, the hotel, uh, for the people, and for the other technology that is already in place and that maybe cannot be changed at this point in time. It all needs to play together, and it's a giant puzzle that is unfortunately still extremely complex. Um, but fortunately, um, shameless plug, uh, there are people out there like me who can help with that. Um, it is, it is of course, possible to, to, to get some help and to, to you know, um, have, have a, a look at all the different pieces of the, uh, the puzzle from the PMS to the booking engine, to the channel manager, to the CRM, and 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 so on all the different pieces that are really essential today uh, and that the hotel needs to be competitive and to stand out you know this is 2021 this is uh the time hopefully after the pandemic where we need to do things differently than how we have done it before and whether we had such a system before the pandemic or not now we need now we need to make sure that we have it so um you know it's 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 really important and it's absolutely crucial that we go with the time and that we upgrade uh, what we have to to stand out. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I can I I completely agree. If you are a hotelier and you have a server in your hotel, I would strongly encourage you uh, to do a little bit of digging around. You probably spent more money last year 
uh, paying someone to write the programming for the thing that's completely obsolete and to keep the server alive than if you were to go to a, a cloud-based solution instead. So just check it out if you're still, you've still got something plugged in in the hotel, you might want to think about it. Uh, we're pretty much up against our time. Um, so what I'd like to do, I'll take a quick second and really managing demand in this pent up era. Let me go right around. We've got three amazing experts. So let me get one final word of, of wisdom from each of them. So Sherrod, we've had you on the shelf for a second. Let me start with you. One final word of wisdom. I'm watch. I tuned in the last five minutes, but it was the most amazing webcast ever. What, what are those words? Well, it's so difficult to, we've spoken about so many things that are uh, very challenging to just put it in a few words, but um, I, I, I do believe there's just a host of things that you can gain from this uh, 45 minute uh, chat that we've had a range of subjects, uh, whether it's technology, whether it's data, whether it's um, marketing, taking small steps, whether it's a uh, customer journey, which is expanded now, whether it's uh, experiences that go beyond just uh, doing that, those little things, but think reimagining and uh, rediscovering how you want to reach out to customers. Uh, uh, a lot of these things, including how do you read data? Who do you, uh, whether OT is uh, the evil partner or is it a contributor, profitability. And, uh, and I think a large part of it just goes down to how resources are currently stacked up in hotels. Uh, what they want to uh, do with these resources in future, how they view these resources in future, because at the end of the day, uh, people at the ground, at the shop floor, are the ones that are managing that business, that pent up demand, and making sure that the hotel is profitable, hotel is operational, and hotel is delivering uh, success in terms of market share and uh, opportunities for all the stakeholders. So review your resources, if you were uh, just culling them earlier, probably you need to rethink how you deploy them in the future. How about you, Christoph? Words of wisdom. Um, all right. Let's redefine revenue management as the art of uncovering opportunity. And the opportunity starts at the beginning of the customer journey throughout the entire uh, pre-booking and booking experience. Um, and then during the stay, and then after the stay as well. And we need to capture the guest at all those different touch points uh, and make sure that that we we provide an outstanding experience uh, along, along that journey. Um, we need to differentiate and we need to make sure that we stand out and we need to do things differently from everybody else in the market. So it will mean a little bit of effort, but it's very doable um, and most people don't do it. And that's the beauty of it. Uh, only a few little things that we do can can make a huge difference and huge impact. Um, so that's that's my closing words. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, Nikki, you're on the spot now. <laughs> cool. Well, I think I mean we covered a lot, but I would probably say I think the the key takeaway from this, if I could, if you know, hopefully anyone takes anything, is is knowing your your customer, knowing your guest. So um, really having a good understanding of who your you know, what your market mix is right now, who are your segments, who are the people that are looking in your kind of area um, or the type of property that you are, really get a really good understanding of that. And I think you'll be set up for success. Um, and and finally, I think, you know, the last topic we talked about on um, integrating a tech stack, it's it, it's so critical and, and we are behind in, the, in our industry with this ele element. And so I think, um, even if you can't invest in this now, thinking about it, starting to plan for it, work with your teams, marketing, get with revenue, um, you know, work together and figure out what what aspects you need, where there are gaps and how you can pull it together. And the, it may, whether it's 2022, 23 or beyond, um, make a plan for when you can when you can start that integration. Awesome. Yeah, I I, I'm actually going to echo what you're saying. And, and uh, uh, what I would say is. Take a step, right? Whether whatever that step might be, as you mentioned, even if it's just learning a little bit about your own organic social media presence, or whether that's something much, 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 much bigger. And I think that all has to do really, if you want to take advantage of stuff, is communicate with the customer earlier in that journey that we were talking about. So sell them their future memory. Don't sell them the bed and toilet that they're going to use while they make their future memory. So anyway, all right. Well, 
Special high tech edition panelists, Sherrod, Christoph, and Nikki. Thank you very much. Thanks to Hospitality Net. Thanks, High Tech. And I uh, hope everybody enjoys the show. Have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.